<coughs> I don't have to <coughs> My name is Matthew Guess, and today I will be talking about this paper that came out in 2016 called Phylogenetic Origin of Limes and Lemons Revealed by Cytoplasmic and Nuclear Markers by Frank Kirk and Associates. Uh, a better title for this paper perhaps would have been the when life gives you lemons determine the phylogenetic origin using cytoplasmic and nuclear markers it's a, a lost opportunity there but that's okay they can all be winners so this is about citrus and uh let's look at citrus so citrus are in the family of the rutaceae uh this is comprised of pomelos tangerines pepitas bergamots oranges lemons limes and many more grapefruit if you're in texas um, they're from the Mediterranean, subtropical, and tropical climates. Now, what we can do is we can look at the biochemical uh, markers of citrus, the numerical taxonomic features, and molecular information, uh, molecular data, to determine the hybridization of four basic taxa. These four basic taxa are as follows. We have, well, number one, the citrus micranthra, which is the papita, native to the southern Philippines. Second, we have Citrus medica, the citron, which is native to India. Third, Citrus reticulata, the mandarin, which is from China. And Citrus maxima, the pomelo, native to Southeast Asia. These are the four basic citrus that uh, essentially, when crossed and interbreed with each other, give us all the citrus that we have today background souring the field. So um, historically and taxonomically, there's lots of conflicts as to the origins of citrus and where they came from and which of the four basic taxa were bred or, or um, mixed uh, to produce these different types that we have today. So then this also makes an interesting question of what is a species because um, there's a lot of different uh, reproductive uh, components to to citrus, one thing is that they have a generic sexual compatibility. And so typically we define a species as anything that can reproduce with it, with a, another thing of that kind is a species. So if, if you know, you have uh, uh, a dog and a cat, well, those are different species because they cannot interbreed, but then we have a golden retriever, we have a Labrador, and these can breed together. And that, so that's the same species. Um, with citrus, they can breed within the genus of citrus, um, and it, it's a bit strange. They also have an interesting feature called apomixis, where we have uh, embryos developing, kind of multiple embryos are developing at once. Some of them are like clones, so this is Nusler embryoni. Um, this provides us multiple embryos at once, and so this makes the, um, the offspring a bit more challenging to trace. So in terms of understanding the origins of certain citrus, the Lisbon type lemon and the Mexican type lime have been identified using the single nucleotide polymorphism, also called the SNP or SNP. Um, but then what about the rest of all the lemons and limes? Where the hell did we get them? I'm sorry, pardon my, my language. Where did we get them? So the objective of this paper was uh, to look at the extended uh, information and do an extended analysis of diversity, genetic structure, and origins of limes and lemon germplasm. So they looked at eight indel regions and 96 single nucleotide polymorphisms, which gives us information on the interspecific structure, so between, um, between within one species. And then 19 of these um, repeating sections, which give us information on intraspecific polymorphisms, so these uh, are between species. And then lastly, we can look at the ploidy to determine the nucellar genome characterization. So what this research team did is they had 133 citrus accessions derived from different sources in Europe. Oh, okay. These are all the different accessions. Um, each of these represents one of the 133 accessions. Method. So what they did was they conducted flow cytometry to look at the uh, ploidy levels. They did DNA extraction to extract the DNA, of course, that's what that is. Um, and then genotyping. And so then they were able to identify specific regions 
that they wanted to that are characteristic of that species. So we have these repeating regions, these areas where there's like insertions or deletions and then specific nucleotides that, um, ooh, it got large, that are relevant called SNPs. Um, and so there was a genetic analysis um, that was conducted and we'll look at that in a second. So of the results here, they conducted this, this tree um, showing closeness and relation to each other. What we would expect is we would expect a lot of the, um, so example, Citrus Medica. These are all the citrons. We'd expect all the Citrus Medica to be in one group or clade and so forth. And so this is the same thing with Micranthra, which are in this green color. Um, the mandarins are in red. And so we'd expect the mandarins to be closely related. And pomelos, the C Citrus Maxima are in blue. Um, and so these are all closely related. And then we see that there's a variety of other different species um, that are all grouped into one clade. And this is using mitochondrial indels and chloroplastic SSRs, the um, simple uh, sequence repeats. So I think particularly interesting are these four clades, the micranthra, the wild mandarins, pomelos, and sour oranges. So they provided this beautiful graphic here, <coughs> COVID, um, where each of the different uh, cultivars is represented by a single bar graph and the percentage of the DNA from that specific ancestor is represented by a color. So for C. medica, we have this yellow color. And so when we look at these citrons, these are all citrus medica and they're different um, types of citrons like Buddha's hand, citron, um, we would expect that they would be primarily C. medica, which is what we see here. Additionally, C. micranthra, which is the papita. Um, this is seen with these two papitas. Uh, in the red, that's our reticulata, which is our mandarin. All of these that are, that are uh, known colloquially as mandarins are very consistent. And lastly, C. maxima, our pomelos are consistently pomelo-like. Uh, and then we have some over here that are like half and half. So if we look at these, these are like the sour orange, <coughs> sweet orange <coughs> and grapefruit. Um, they're half reticulata and half maxima. And we can look at all the different um, citrus that they analyze with this. What's interesting to note is that with uh, some of these, we see that citrus, uh, citrus orange, Orantifolia, or the Kirk lime, has a little bit of all four of them. And we call this citrus orantifolia. But there's also another citrus called citrus orantifolia. It's a different type of lime. And there's some of the Mexican lime. Um, they share very different genetics. And so this, ident this points out an issue with our nomenclature is that um, based on our previous information, we said, oh, well, these are closely related. So they're the same species. Um, C or antifolia, but it's uh, Kirk lime seems to show lots of mandarin in it and um, the pomelo more than these other limes. And we can go through all these. Um, this is a zoom in of what I talked about. Um, yeah, this is the example of the limes and lemons. So these, these are all colloquially, colloquially called limes and um, culinarily they, they, they serve the, fe the feature of, of lime. But uh, we see that their origins are different. This section here, that's a C CT4 section. Um, they have a lot of the reticulata and the mandarin in them. But Medica, Medica is prominent throughout all of them. So what, what's going on with Medica? Well, look at this. Medica is in all of these. Wow. So they, they produce this graphic. Let's move it. They produce this graph. <coughs> they produce this graphic that shows the relationship between the four basic taxa. And look here, looky here. We have C. medica, which is the father to all citrus. And so the this is our micranthra uh, papita. It's the, the mother to certain citrus. But Medica is the father to everything, except there's a specific group of like sour oranges that um, the Mandarin is the father of. But C. Medica um, can be traced paternally back. So this diagram is useful for thinking about the origins of things. So if we want to look at um, 
this one, then we say, okay, the mother is our micranthra and the father is the uh, medica. And so we get this plant. And uh, you can trace that with all of these. Interesting, what happens is that when we hit the limes, there's an interesting change in ploidy. So here with the Tahiti lime, that's uh, triploid, the giant key lime <coughs> is uh, tetraploid. So something happened <coughs> here with our uh, ploidy levels. Additionally, what's interesting is that there's an interspecific inter hybridization between a lot of the different um, oranges. And so mandarins mix with our maxima, the um, gives us our oranges that we consider oranges, at least colloquially. And then those can become uh, bred back with our C. medica. What's interesting is that the Meyer lemon is very much more close related to like an orange than other types of lemons. Uh, so some significant, <coughs> significant findings. Oh, citron, uh, lemons and limes are derived from four basic tetra, te, uh, taxa of C. medica as paternal ancestors. So citron, you are the father to almost all of the almost all of them. Okay, so we got our, our citron. Okay, <laughs> uh, triploid limes. Two distinct groups of triploid limes have been present. Uh, the Tahiti triploid lime is a lime-like accession that was uh, probably the result of fertilization of haploid lemon ovule about a diploid gamete of a diploid um, Mexican-like lime. And so this occurs with another type as well. Uh, my personal favorite are the Mexican limes. Um, this is the only lime that we need to think about most of the time. Everything else is, is just novelty. Uh, asexual variation is worth noting. So sporadic mutations in the mobility of transposable elements have been proposed as a source of diversity within citrus groups propagated vegetatively by apomictic seeds or by grafting. So apomictic seeds are the seeds that produce um, without fertilization. Another thing that's interesting is reticulation. Um, there's a lot of convergent lines. So botanical con uh, classifications and colloquial names don't do justice to the origins. Um, we saw that we had um, citrus orantifolia which was two different types of limes, but they had completely different origins, one from um, mandarins and the other one did not. Colloquial names are useful for distinguishing them, but they don't give you information about the origins. Going forward, it'd be useful to investigate admixture. So how everything comes down and then uh, interbreeds. Also this, the phylogenetics of lemons and limes and the subgroups between them can lead to better development of citrus rootstocks, understanding the origins and uh, developing different types of acid citrus. So this is our diagram again, it's a beautiful diagram. Spend some time to appreciate the Mexican lime and how it's the mother to the Kirk lime, how it's the father to the Tahiti lime. <laughs> okay, um, some, some of the data. All right, I think that's it. Well, thank you for watching this um, presentation. Um...